Hello, my name is Melissa Daniels and I have strabismus. Strabismus is when your eyes are not pointing in the same direction or they're not working together. And this channel is all about learning anything that can help get those eyes straight, get them working together and dealing with the emotional side of having an eye turn. So today's video, I am going to be talking about different exercises that are good for people with esotropia, which is when your eyes are turning in. Before we jump in, be sure to go over to learn.strabismussolutions.com. There you can get a lot of different resources that I have. If you wanna schedule a call with me, you can get the free quiz or get one of my courses or digital downloads. So be sure to check that out. There's a lot to offer and see over there. Let's talk about esotropia. So esotropia is when instead of your eyes pointing straight and then nicely coming in and going out as you look near and in the distance, one eye stays straight and the other eye is turned in. And a lot of times people with esotropia are really focused on details and they just are kind of caught right here. They don't see the bigger picture. They're looking here. And this is amazing to me because as I talk to different people, almost like if I could talk to them without seeing their eyes, I could guess whether they had exotropia or esotropia based on their personality and <laughs> their questions. It's very interesting to me. A lot of times people with exotropia are really good at seeing the big picture and they have a hard time focusing in on little details. And so with esotropia, it's the opposite problem. So there are some similarities in like treatment and how you're gonna go about fixing that. Both of them, definitely I re recommend going to a vision therapy office. It's a really complex diagnosis as far as vision goes. So doing some simple eye exercises at home is not gonna fix this. But some things that you would expect if you go into vision therapy, the kinds of exercises that you would be doing there for esotropia. Pretty much anything that's gonna help, instead of focusing here, focus here. So that is the big picture. Some, let's talk about five different things that we might do to get that. So one, this is basic with any patient, is eye stretches. Um, this isn't necessarily like the scene big or scene small, but learning to control the eye and especially working on pulling those eye muscles out. So doing up and out, probably not a lot of in because you're already good at that, right? So we're gonna just, eye stretches are when you are following a moving target and kind of stretching those out. And those you're gonna probably do one eye at a time. Usually you have a weak eye and a strong eye. So that's just basics. Eye basics for any human being. This is like doing a core workout, right? Doing, doing some crunches, right? This is, every person is gonna benefit with strabismus or without from doing eye stretches. So that is always like foundational, is moving both eyes. Second, um, especially for esotropia, and I put this second on the list because it is so important, is um, I kind of grouped it together, visualization, meditation, and yoga, okay? whatever flavor you choose, all of these things are helping to just slow down the brain, calm down and like breathe and see the big picture. That is what each of those exercises can do. So a little bit more details, visualization, there's actually so much you can do to build visual pictures that are not real. So um, one of my favorites, and I talk a lot about this um, in my mastering peripheral course, but 8D music. You wear over ear headphones and you listen to music. It's called 8D music because it's kind of like 3D movies, but for your ears and like there's sounds in all directions. And I love to put those on and then visualize this big open space and just relax. Um, another way I love to do this is through virtual reality. I use the app Trip. It's a meditation app that's like kaleidoscopes and it's, they have like breathing exercises where you're breathing and it can like tell based on the headset, I think, or maybe it's, I don't know what it is, but you can feel yourself breathing in and breathing out and it's a guided meditation just to help calm and relax. I personally have esotropia and I was born with esotropia and had surgery, so my eye went out for a while, but really I still have like the problems in the brain of somebody with esotropia. So for me, this is a way to slow down, kind of let things blur out. It's right, you've got this like kaleidoscope, this big sky. I'm not, there's not really a lot of little details to look at. I'm just looking at the big picture. 
And so that is a great way. I love to do the, the trip meditation on my um, Oculus. Um, and then yoga is just a great one where especially I love it when the lights are kind of down. Again, we're not looking at visual details. We're working on breathing, relaxation. All of those things are actually huge keys to letting your eyes relax because right now they're in this like tightened, like hyper-focused posture and we want to just relax that out. Okay. So that is going to be your biggest hurdle probably if you have esotropia. <laughs> All the rest will come when you start learning how to do this. Um, wish I had figured that out sooner because it was is such an important piece. I find that when I'm getting really stressed and focused on all the little things in my life, my eyes start coming in again. They kind of follow that personality. So that's the second thing. Third, also so important, is peripheral. Peripheral is king for esotropia because a lot of times with esotropia, we're going down to tunnel vision. And I know you're gonna say, I still ha I have good peripheral vision. I know you think you do. And I promise that it could be a lot, lot better. And there's so much you could do to improve that. Again, once you get your brain looking for things on the outside, that's gonna naturally help move that eye position out, but also keep your awareness out here. So I my mastering peripheral course is the ideal way to figure this out. Um, I go through different reasons of like why it's important, some different techniques, and then some exercises that are gonna help you know how to incorporate this and how to actually practice this. And this is something that you can do. Um, ideally, this would be like, combined with vision therapy or done before vision therapy just to kind of help you start seeing that big picture. But um, some just some quick ideas I can like throw out there for working on peripheral. You could be um, looking at a window and make a big circle. I have a dot on the window, nothing detailed, not like a little picture with like little tiny letters. We're not doing that, just like something big on the window. And you're looking at that and then naming and calling out things that you can see. So right now I'm looking at my camera and I can say Christmas wreath, car, cloud that looks, I don't know, um, tree, I can see a camera, I can see a painting, right? So I start naming things that I can see out of my peripheral vision. And when you start calling out those items, man, that makes a difference. Um, another example would be lots of different exercises um, where, Again, I, I always, for isotropia, would say do things like on a window, not facing a wall, right? We want to open up space, not close space down. So, you know, you might have like a, again, a, something in the middle. I, I made one that's kind of cute. It's like all these little dog houses and they're all around, kind of in a circle, kind of like a clock. And I'm looking at the middle and then I have like a little car that I drive into each of these you know, or a dog, whatever. I like to use a car because then they can drive it on the window. Re kids really like that one. Um, again, we're just, can I keep my, my central vision here and can I do things peripherally, right? Um, also think about the, when you're thinking about peripheral vision, it's not just out here, it's the space, because I'm looking at my hand, it's all the space between me and my hand, all the space after my hand and everywhere else besides my hand is my peripheral vision. And so, Anything you can do to kind of expand that. Can you see bigger? Can you see more? Can you take in more of this world? Be aware, go away from that tunnel vision. And as you do that, that's just gonna help relax that visual system. Okay, in conjunction with that, and I, I wanted to have a separate thing for this because they're two different things. Um, peripheral stereo. So what we were talking about before, peripheral is like, can I be aware of a lot of different things? And you can, you can do that with one eye, right? Like I can see my cup and look at my cup and then I can see things peripherally, right? Like that can be just one eye. Super important. We're going to do it with both eyes. But what I'm saying is that doesn't necessarily require fusion between your two eyes. So it's really good and helps relax the system. But in order to really get both eyes working together, we want to give some sort of fusion exercise. So what I, I would call this like peripheral stereo. So I have some different, I, I think I have a download called peripheral stereo. You could make it as simple as putting on a pair of red and green glasses or red and blue glasses and looking at a white wall. And one eye sees red and one eye sees green and you want to see a mixture of those two colors, which is called luster. And so 
that's very peripheral, no details. That's like the perfect esotropia exercise, very boring, okay? Put on a podcast and stare at the wall. <laughs> it's, it's not fun, but super effective. Again, we're trying to get both eyes kind of working together, and so we're mixing that, but we're starting peripheral. Um, you can do different, like, in vision therapy, they have a lot of different exercises. Let me grab mine out. You guys have seen my gem many times. Um, this gem, so if I hold it far away, it's really small and it is central, right? But if I hold it right here up to my face, is that close enough? And I'm kind of actually looking through it. And if I were to put my glasses on, my polarized, no, nope, those ones aren't them. I have so many pairs of glasses, it's kind of silly. Um, if I put this right here and I'm kind of looking through, I can peripherally be aware that what's happening. I'm looking at it backwards. Everything's backwards. It's not going to work right now. But um, anyways, I can see that floating peripherally. So I'm not looking at this. I'm seeing it peripherally. So this is really small. Like, and if you go into a vision therapy office, they have some amazing ways to do this. Like they'll project it up onto a wall. So it's like huge, like talk about peripheral, like awesomeness, right? Each eye is seeing something different. The eyes combine them together to see something in with depth. Um, they have like 3D TVs where again, they'll use this like a big ring and it's like really big non-central targets, right? That's what Isotropia needs. Like the HoloLens is really cool. Um, virtual reality can be cool for this if you use the right apps. Some of them get really into the details, um, but we want to keep things big, peripheral. There are some you can do at home for this, but really like this is the step where you've really got to be in the office to really get what you need. Um, and then the last thing, the last thing for esotropia um, is just letting go of the details. Seeing the big picture, taking a deep breath. And this goes for every aspect of your life. Don't just sit here and focus on here and the details and be on your phone, right? We want to look big. We want to look far. We want to look to the mountains and really open up that peripheral. And in your life, you need to do the same thing. So recap. One, work on eye stretches. Can you actually physically move your eyes in all directions, especially working on moving out and having that ability? Um, doing that with your eyes closed with visualization, right? Can you visualize your finger moving? As I'm doing this, can I still move my eye and follow my finger, right? Um, okay, so that's eye stretches. Two, visualization, meditation, and yoga. Can you just relax your system, let things go, right? That's kind of the same as five, but it's really important, so I had to put it twice. Okay, three, working on your peripheral, can you get rid of that tunnel vision? Can you be aware of something central? And, you know, can, can you just kind of even look out, stand on the porch and look out and what can you see peripherally? What can you, can you touch it? Can you see the different things in your peripheral space and feel yourself in that space? Definitely the Mastering Peripheral course is going to help with that. Four is peripheral stereo. Can you actually use your eyes together and get fusion in your peripheral? That's where it's going to start for, um, for esotropia. Definitely this is the step where you really got to be in a vision therapy office working with them and their tools. We don't want to go for double vision. Many times people with esotropia are going to be gravitating towards activities with details like Tetris and with the red and green glasses and and like something with really small details. And that's what you're gonna to gravitate towards and that's the exact opposite of what you need. You really need to avoid all of that and look at the big picture. And then again, let go of the details, see the bigger picture, okay? That is the theme for esotropia. Don't look at something small, look at something big. Try to get off your phone, try to um, look in the distance. All of those things are gonna be massively important for esotropia. And of course, go to a vision therapy office. They're gonna help guide you through this process. If you need help finding a vision therapy office, you can go over to learn.strabismussolutions.com. You put in your details there. I will send you an email with my personal recommendations in your area to help you out. So good luck with that. I will put links in the description for the different things that I talked about, and we will see you in the next video.